So welcome back to our last part of lecture 22 today. I wanted to spend the last part looking at bases of the null space and the column space of A. So this is kind of tying back to this idea of system of linear equations. So we have a system of linear equations, you know, and you have a matrix, and we've seen that this matrix actually will define two subspaces. It defines the null space and the column space. And what we want to be able to do is be able to have bases for these, because the whole point is the basis is the efficient way of describing these sets. So I want to kind of describe how to get this information about the basis for these subspaces. And it should come to no surprise to you at this point that basically a lot of the information you're looking for is actually embedded into the reduced row echelon form of your matrix. So there's really nothing going to be nothing too new in what I'm doing here, what are all the new stuff is just adding some new terminology. So let's say I gave you a matrix right here, A, and we're trying to find a basis for both the null space and the column space. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to put it into row reduced echelon form, and then we're going to need information right here. We're going to need this information. We're going to need to know where the pivot columns are. So we have two pivot columns right here and here. And we also need to know where what variables are free. Okay, so x3 and x4 are free variables in this case. So well, let's first do the null space. How do we find a basis for the null space? Right? So we actually saw uh, how to get a spanning set. And that was kind of in the last lecture, right? So we saw how to get a spanning set. The spanning set is just describing the set of all solutions, right? So I'm going to kind of skim over some of the details here, but we have x1, x2, x3, x4. And rewriting everything in terms of free variables, we have x4 x3, we have minus 5 half x3, minus 3 half x4. Here we have minus 6 x3, minus 5 x4. And what we're going to do is break it up as the things involving x3, which is minus 6, minus 5 halves, 1 and 0. And then with those with x4, so we have minus 5, minus 3 half, 0, 1. I mean, you may want to pause here and see if you can recreate these numbers by yourself. And what we have here, right, kind of from last time, is that the null space of A is the spanning set of these two vectors, right? So this is something we were doing over and over again since the beginning of the course. And now our new thing here is that this is a, a spanning set for the null space. Okay. Now the, the spanning set theorem, which is right over here, says that, well, once you have a spanning set, you have to just decide which things to throw away and whatever you... Well, so you have to throw away the linearly dependent things. And once you do that, you actually have, have a basis. But the nice thing here is when you're looking for the null space, you're actually getting the basis for free. Okay, so here is the following fact, is that this procedure actually produces a basis, right? So, i.e., the vectors are linearly independent. Okay. Now, let me just kind of explain why this is always going to be true, just using this particular example, right? And it has to do with the free variables. Right. So if you look at what's happening here, let's say you're trying to look for a linear combination of these two vectors. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm just writing the two vectors here. So give me a minute right here. Okay, and we don't really care. Oh, whoa, I don't know why that happened. Let's get rid of that. Okay. Let's not care about these two particular entries right here. Notice that when I do any sort of linear combination, I will have C1 in this spot and I'll have C2 in this spot. And this is because these are the spots corresponding to the free variables. So this will actually happen more generally is that when you're doing a linear combination of vectors, where the free variables are, you're only gonna get the coefficient coming from the first free variable, and then you're gonna have the coefficient coming from the second free variable. And when you look at this and you say, well, I want this equal to zero, 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 how can that happen? Well, these two rows right here tell me that C1, C2 equals zero. Okay, so this is, maybe I'll just point it right here is you get the spots of the free variables. And so I know this is a special case, but this is why, how you would prove it in general that the vectors produced by this procedure are always linearly independent. Okay, so we, there's actually nothing new here. The only thing the new is just saying that, oh, when you found the spanning set, you actually found the basis at the same time. You got it for free because the vectors you found are linearly independent. Okay, well, what about the column space? Well, recall that the column space is the span, the span of the columns. Okay, so by the spanning theorem, so by the spanning set theorem, Right? What you need to do is you need to throw out linearly dependent vectors. Need to throw out linearly dependent vectors. Okay, which ones are bad? So some of them we just don't need. And the following theorem actually tells you which ones you can keep. Right? So the pivot columns of A is a basis for the column space of A. Okay, so here is kind of, you gotta pay really attention here is, it's the pivot columns of A. It's not the pivot columns of the, the reduced form. So go over here and these guys here are the pivot columns. Right, and they're the pivot columns because that's the columns where you have the pivots. So in our example, oops, sorry, that shouldn't be there. So our example, let's see if I can get it on both slides here. Uh, our example, our column space of A is equal to the span of the first two columns, minus two to minus three and four minus six and eight. Okay, so that would be the basis for my column space. So uh, let me re-emphasize what I just said with a bright red warning, which is that you use, use the columns of A, not the columns of the reduced row echelon for. Okay, so pay attention to that. So there is, we're getting to the end here, and this let me kind of summarize some of the key points from today's lecture. We turned about bases, which is a concept that's extremely important in linear algebra, and we also learned about the spanning set theorem. So I hope these examples helped you out uh, today and reinforce these concepts. Uh, in the next lecture, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, bases when we talk about coordinate systems. Okay, so I hope you have a good day and uh, I will see you in the next lecture. Bye.